Hi, I'm Don Williams. I'm from the Herring Ponds Watershed Association. I'm the president. Uh, we've had a busy year. We've had a uh, cyanobacteria bloom, which we got rid of in, in two uh, months, which I think is good. It didn't come back. We've gotten money from the town of Plymouth for the first time to do a water quality plan. Uh, we've raised a $10,000 match for that. The Plymouth share is $71,024. Uh, we've gotten a lot of new members because of this uh, cyanobacteria bloom. We're trying to capitalize on that desperately. And one of the things that we've done is we've established a ComCom, which is a communications committee. And we're going to be scheduling events. Uh, we're going to be scheduling uh, uh, responses on, on our uh, website, on Facebook. And... Let's see, we have done a, an invasives uh, study with Sarah, who is no longer with us here. Uh, we've had a number of successes. Uh, we have a new uh, education committee chair, and we're thinking of doing some uh, snippets for children who are at home from school on environmental issues. Uh, that's, that's a good step forward. Uh, we have a new board member, Tom O'Brien, who's going to be our new water safety chair. And finally, I think we have, uh, well, that's it. That's pretty much it. We've, it's, it's been a busy year. We've, we've had a, a good interaction of the board. We've gotten a lot of new members. We're up to 420 on our uh, constant contact member. So, uh, it's good. I mean, we're, we're doing good things. We're trying to be sensitive to people. We're trying to treat our members equitably, even the ones that aren't living right on the water, and especially the ones that aren't living right on the water. So uh, thanks for the time, Dory. Thank you, Don. Well, let's hear from James next. I might not have the, the widest breadth of everything that's going on. Pine would have a better idea, but I do know in regards of the ecology program, so I'm James Garner. I'm with the Jones River Watershed Association. I'm the Ecology Program Director and um, Watershed Ecologist for the Jones River Watershed Association. Um, and so far uh, this year, one of the bigger things that we've uh, had going on is we applied for the Seaport Economic Council grant, uh, which we got for um, uh, engineering design and planning for our uh, landing resiliency project, which is to kind of uh, make our headquarters uh, climate change resilient. Um, we've also started an environmental DNA study for the entire watershed. So it started last year and it will continue through this year, um, looking at how diadromous fish use in our watershed has changed now that we've removed two main stem dams. Um, we have been applying for funding for our headwaters restoration project. We have one final main stem dam on the Jones River that we are looking to put a permanent fish ladder on with Division of Marine Fisheries, Fish and Wildlife, and other partners. Um, we also have a project to turn the house next door into a field station, um, and it is finally becoming habitable. Um, so we're kind of in the final stages of upkeep and updating that house to. Uh, hold scientists and researchers and government agencies who need to use it to study our watershed. Um, also recently, uh, the JRWA um, teamed up with Wildlands Trust uh, to submit a grant to Rockland Trust um, to develop some lesson plans and some video content for the, the Brockton schools. Um, and so hopefully we'll be hearing from them soon so that we can get going. And what we want to, the content we want to create is all about um, water resource management, um, uh, sustainability, uh, ecological resilience, um, and how how different uh, places use use water resources and how we could be better. Um, so that's kind of what we've got going on. I'm Carrie Snyder. I'm the advocacy director for the Ponce River Watershed Association. Um, we have not let uh, COVID stop us, just like <laughs> the rest of, of the watersheds um, in southeastern Mass. Um, we're going full steam ahead. So we've, uh, we've been doing a lot of habitat restoration, uh, particularly in um, Norwood and Milton along Trapple Brook, which is our, um, 
our best uh, cold water fishery. Um, and Pine Tree Brook in Milton, um, we're actually uh, partnering with Greater Boston um, Trout Unlimited to do, um, to do some of that work. Um, we're doing some invasives removal, um, removing dams, uh, planting some trees to stabilize some of the banks, stuff like that. Um, we just had our fall river cleanup um, with 300 volunteers, socially distanced uh, across 12 sites. Um, everything went very smoothly, um, and I think it was our, our largest turnout ever. Um, we've been working with our towns to update their, um, their stormwater bylaws and regulations. Um, in fact, um, some of our work was just featured in the Region 1 EPA stormwater newsletter um, that came out uh, earlier this month. Um, so we're very proud of that, and um, we've, got, uh, we've got most of the towns who have either passed an update or are working on their update. Um, we, uh, we've also been working uh, on um, providing feedback to NASDEP on some of their water withdrawal permitting activity. Um, they're, uh, they're working on um, the Neponset watershed and we've been able to submit some, some preliminary feedback uh, on some of what the towns are doing. We're also working directly with the towns to sort of let them know what, um, what we'd like to see them do in terms of water conservation. Um, and uh, mitigation for their water withdrawals. Um, NSP is going strong, that's our uh, Neponset Stormwater Partnership. Um, we have had to uh, change some of what we do, particularly around education, since uh, many of our students are, uh, are physically in school. Um, so Nancy in our office has really been working hard to sort of transform that and reach out to teachers directly to make sure um, that uh, the content around stormwater and water conservation is, is getting out there. Um, uh, in other outreach, we're also, we just started, um, I think we just had our second uh, Watershed Wednesday presentation. So uh, once a month, we're doing sort of a half hour uh, lunchtime uh, Watershed Wednesday talk on a particular um, uh, topic that we think is of interest to the watershed. And the first one was on climate change and yesterday's was on um, uh, Cold water trout um, in, uh, in the rivers. Um, we, uh, let's see, uh, we've got lots of grant applications going on. We're trying to do a lot of um, retrofitting um, for stormwater BMPs. Um, and we're working with Quincy and Stoughton, and we just got our first uh, grant to work with Medfields, too. So we're very excited about that. Um, let's see, I think. Um, I think that's most of what we're, oh, uh, we're doing, we're also doing the environmental DNA program. Um, it was supposed to be this spring and uh, fall, but it was pushed back to fall and next spring. So we just collected our first set of data um, and we're, we're analyzing that to sort of figure out where, um, uh, where our fish are, basically. Um, and finally, we've been doing a lot of work um, uh, in Lower Neponset um, around education and, and sort of, um, uh, engaging with some of the communities there who have been dealing with uh, some, some access issues um, and uh, uh, trying to, to make sure that, we're, um, that uh, they're able to get the, the things fixed that they need to um, with VCR. VCR is, is um, sort of overworked and under budgeted. Um, so we're, we're trying to, to do some work there. And I think that's most of what we've been doing. Thank you. Our staff, Kate McPherson, who many of you have met is um, has been working with the Mass, with Mass DER on restoration of a an abandoned cranberry bog in Freetown called uh, the site is called Millbrook and um, identifying plant and animal species. But this is a very large tract of land that, of course, was altered um, by the cranberry bog operation. So this is be the the, the long term effort is to actually restore the wetland that this bog kind of wrecked actually. So this is going to be a multi-year project and we, we think there may be other opportunities to do more freshwater wetland restoration in the Taunton um, going forward. And I guess the other thing is um, after um, a, a stop, a, a um, slow down and then stop of a lot of volunteer work, we are our staff and now volunteers in small numbers are out on Narragansett Bay and its rivers doing monitoring for water, uh, um, water quality, for bacteria and nutrients, as well as microplastics. Um, 
<clears throat> we are now again doing on smaller scale than we're used to coastal cleanups all around Narragansett Bay, as well as the marking of storm drains in cities and towns um, with volunteers, uh, along with awareness raising education efforts. Um, because that's our, if there's a big long term issue that I think probably we all deal with, that's, that's, it's, it's everyone's problem. It, it's from everyone, it affects everyone. It is stormwater management. So, um, yeah, that's, that's sort of, that's what we've been up to. That's just the surface. Hi, I'm Heather Rockwell from Barnstable Clean Water Coalition. I'm the director of operations. Um, we've been busy. I'll update you on uh, probably two of our bigger projects first. Um, we've been doing a lot of work as well out in Cranberry Bogs uh, in our area. Um, we have now put in three permeable reactive barriers, uh, otherwise known as, we're calling them bioreactors, uh, within these cranberry systems. And these are still, some of these cranberry bogs in the system are still actively farmed. Um, others are retired. Um, and so we're looking at uh, how much nitrogen that these bioreactors hopefully can remove from the groundwater and surface water flowing through the bogs and ultimately down into the three base estuary. Uh, another exciting thing that's happening in these cranberry bogs is uh, we're also working with Alex Hackman about trying to restore a good portion of the system of bogs and we're hoping to hear um, about how that work will move forward soon. Uh, we're also going to be restoring a natural herring run. Uh, you know, we monitor the herring run along the Marston's Mills River at two of the fish ladders and uh, we were supposed to, uh, or actually uh, the town um, along with state funds was supposed to restore the herring run, what's called the flume, which is the big concrete sluiceway. And, We've worked uh, with uh, NRCS, uh, Division of Marine Fisheries, and our town, and it looks like we're now gonna restore the natural um, herring run through the cranberry box, working with the cranberry bog owner. So we're really excited about that, and uh, that's gonna be moving forward. Um, with regards to our innovative alternative septic system project, um, I think I told you last time that we were gonna need to shift where we were gonna put in uh, these septic systems around this this pond at Shubal Pond uh, is the pond that we're focusing on and we found that by doing some uh, some groundwater wells and looking at sampling they were able to determine that the water is actually flowing in a different way so we're kind of after having to shift the neighborhood of where we're going to put these in uh, but we are going around uh, we've talked to quite a few people who are willing to let us put in these uh, new systems which are essentially an add-on to uh, existing Title V systems uh, so we're hoping to get um, three to 10 of those in, I think is what the numbers are, uh, hopefully uh, starting this fall. Um, and uh, something else that goes along with that project is we have just put in a ecological landscaping garden, demonstration garden um, in front of our office. So we tore up everything in front of our office. Uh, we have a board member, Jack Ahern, who's a retired professor, landscape architect from UMass Amherst. And he designed this garden so that um, we can demonstrate to people that you don't need to use irrigation, fertilizer, or pesticides to have a nice uh, garden that uses native plants uh, that can help clean the water. Um, so uh, we tore up everything. We have the plants down. And we're going to use this along with our innovative alternative septic system so we can go to these people who were tearing up their yard and putting in these septic systems and saying, hey, instead of just putting in a, a nice green lawn and flowers that have no business being around here, you know, how about you come take a look at what we've done at our office? So we're hoping it's gonna be a good educational uh, piece that we can use. Um, we've been doing a lot of, um, I know uh, Dory's seen some of them, we've done a, a video library of a lot of the projects we're working on that, that tell people about, you know, septic systems is our main problem here and about, you know, nutrient overload and, these different IA systems and about cyanobacteria. So we're moving ahead with doing more of these videos. So um, uh, feel free to check them out on our website. Um, we're also, we're in our, we're almost done. We're in our third year of our dredging project on Deadneck Sansons Island. Uh, the dredging just started a few weeks ago and it should wrap up within two weeks. So we're excited to have that project be done. Um, and we're also involved we're gonna be working with uh, the Cape Cod Commission, which is our big regulatory body here on the Cape. Uh, they're doing a climate uh, change action plan, and we're gonna be one of the organizations helping to 
uh, run a focus group and get some of our, hopefully some of our members and supporters involved. And I think that's about it. Thank you, Heather. That was quite a lot. Wow, that's exciting. Um, Melissa, you are next. And after Melissa will be Sam. No, well, I mean, I think Dawn updated uh, much of what we're doing in the watershed on that side. I think for Herring Pond, we, we are working on our, um, our traditional ecological knowledge project, which is involved. Um, I'm not sure if any of you were able to view the Chronicle episode that we had that we did. Um, it aired last Thursday, and it is on their YouTube site if you did miss it. Um, but we're, you know, we're really starting to concentrate on the work that's being done over there. But what we're hoping to do, uh, even though we're so fortunate to have the water quality testing through Herring Pond Watershed Association, we also are hoping to uh, do some water testing ourselves just so that we can train our, our, our folks and the, the community to do that work as well. So we're hoping to at some point um, do some geospatial mapping and some storytelling maps to sort of decolonize the maps and make a herring pond map that is strictly tribal land, tribal fishing spots, uh, and all of these really cool areas. And part of that would be some water quality testing and learning how to do all of these really important sort of Western science things that uh, the tribe may not have used in, in the past. So I think that would be our update because Dawn sort of Help me out on that uh, on the other side. So we have a lot to learn and, and a lot to do, but one day at a time. Thanks very much, Melissa. Sam, you're up. I'm just so impressed with what everybody is uh, sharing. I'm going to all your websites. <laughs> so good work, everybody. It's very inspiring to see what everybody's up to. Um, so in our watershed, uh, we've had, um, kind of monopolized our time in the last month or so to have a campaign to um, reinstate funding to the only scenic protected river in the state, which is the North River. And um, I, uh, we started a, a petition a couple of weeks ago. We've got over uh, 2,300 signers now from the public. And um, we've recently heard just yesterday from the Lieutenant Governor's office that the, indeed they will um, reinstate at least 30,000 of the 50,000 that we asked for to uh, be able to fund the commission that, reg that administers the order through the end of June next year with a commitment to discuss with uh, to have the government agency that administers this um, which is Department of Conservation and Recreation uh, to meet with our legislators and the commission to discuss a long-term funding solution so I guess the moral of this story is um, getting people to sign a petition can actually motivate your government, uh, particularly in an election or maybe a week or two before the election uh, to do something. So particularly when it's something they could do. You know, I think um, the government right now is obviously strapped for money and is, is gonna be um, cutting things and this was a relatively small and doable ask. So I feel like we made, um, we had a success. It's not a complete success. As they say, we may have won the battle, but we have not won the war. So <laughs> we will continue to um, advocate to get it fully funded and hopefully get it funded uh, annually without having to fight every year for this um, small amount of money, but important amount of money to save this river, it really, uh, it's been 42 years, it's been under, it's the only scenic protected river in the state of Massachusetts. It used legislation, our predecessors used it from 1971. Uh, no other river has took, took, took the government up on this piece of legislation and so we're a bit of a unicorn. Anyway, so that's, that's the biggest news that I have right now. We are celebrating our 50th, um, or trying to, we had hoped to have a big party, but um, that's not happening. But we are having a series of virtual events, one of which is a campfire storytelling, virtual campfire storytelling with Jeff Corwin, who happens to live on our river um, and is a sort of celebrity nature guy. So uh, that'll be Friday the 13th 
<laughs> and the theme of our storytelling hour is nature, what could go wrong? And um, so it should be kind of fun. Hopefully a, a little bit of a laugh for people. Um, that's really my news. That the biggest one is that petition. And I have to say, I was overwhelmed, blown away by the numbers of people who have signed this petition and, and who, as a result, also were inspired to support us financially. So we have like over a thousand new emails in our database um, and we have over a hundred new donations. So, uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's the river behind me. <laughs> that's my, that's my update. Hey Sam, we're 50 years uh, old this year as well. So happy birthday to you yeah. as well. To the seventies. <laughs> you don't look like a day over 49, either of you. <laughs> I was born, I was three years old when my watershed started. What about you? Uh, <laughs> All right, we're moving on to Hampton. Hi, I'm Hampton Watkins. I'm the vice president of the Six Ponds Improvement Association. And I've been the Six Ponds water guy of late. Um, the principal activities that, that uh, we've been doing is since the 1952 founding of the Six Ponds Improvement Association, uh, we've been periodically testing and recording with the town and more recently with SMAST at uh, UMass Dartmouth, the uh, water quality of our ponds. We also coordinate closely with the, the town on uh, detection and uh, management of the access to our most troubled and most impaired pond, uh, which in, in recent years has been halfway pond. Like Don's um, herring pond, we had and, and continue to have, though it's improving over the past several weeks, a cyanobacteria bloom uh, that has been recurring. That uh, pond halfway um, is uh, a large shallow pond and adjacent to it are four cranberry bogs uh, that have been in production for uh, over a hundred years at this point. So the, the, the issue of um, eventually cleaning up the, the uh, residues left in the, the ponds, both the insecticides and uh, the nutrients, the phosphate and nitrate, are a key set of activities that, that we're involved with. Um, I'm the, the new guy from our, our Six Ponds Association uh, on the, the WA representing it. Uh, Henrietta Cosentino will, will uh, no longer be engaged, nor um, occasionally Pompey Delafield, our president, may sit in for me, but uh, we are here and we're going to continue our support uh, now and in the future. And Dory is one of our, our neighbors and resident on uh, Long Pond. Uh, one of our, our great ponds. So uh, if, if anyone wants data on uh, the six ponds, water chemistry, water quality for uh, roughly the past 50 years, uh, come and talk to us and, and we'll be able to assist in providing. Um, we're in the process now of uh, linking all of our data sets into um, our sixponds.org uh, webpage, which has recently been redone by a couple of our members. And uh, we've got a separate section that will provide all of the, the data that, that the town and various groups and the volunteers of the Six Ponds organization have collected. And in fact, today, um, I just got some results for uh, our ponds along Long Pond Road, Little Long and Long Pond and Bloody Pond, uh, 
which was which sits between Route Three and Long Pond Road on the the sodium chloride calcium pot potassium levels uh, as measured last month in the the ponds and uh, they're surprisingly elevated but not not so surprisingly uh, because they're adjacent to active roadways that are heavily salted during the the uh, the season, the winter season. So those are some of the activities that, that we participate in. And uh, I look forward to, to working with Dory and the rest of the members. And I've been uh, very much impressed by the, the uh, activities that are going on in the other watersheds um, that are in Southeast Mass. So that's it. Great, thank you so much, Hampton. And we do have another five minutes to hear um, from uh, Don and Melissa and perhaps Hampton again about the Cranberry Bog mitigation subcommittee work, exciting work that's going on. Well, our, our, I'll start. Our, our name is uh, still in dispute, but uh, we did come up with a, uh, a management by committee mission statement and we, we'd like your approval on that. And I'll read it to you. The mission of the, uh, the, the uh, Watershed Action Alliance Cranberry Bog Coalition is to cultivate long-term partnerships with growers and conservationists to explore and remediate adverse effects of cranberry bog operations on the health of the ecosystem in southeastern Mass and to honor the historic significance of the Wampanoag lands that sustain us. Now I'll give you a chance to think about that and I'll tell you what we've done. Uh, the members of the committee are Henrietta, myself, Hampton, Melissa, and Pine Dubois. And we have met, uh, I guess once by Zoom, and we have talked collectively to the DCR about and Hampton has done this uh, about what kind of deal that Make Peace made to be able to develop uh, their their land. There is no deal actually, and there is no uh, there is no promise on the part of Make Peace to take bogs out of service on a schedule. Uh, Henrietta talked to Casey Danhauser of the NRCS, which is Natural Resources Conservation Service about such things as uh, restoration of, of uh, bogs and the, uh, the bioreactors, which I'm very interested in. Now, I've talked with Gloriana Daven Davenport, who was a grower and who rehabbed Tidmarsh Farms. So we've got some information. Our next uh, meeting will be with Brian Wick. He's the executive director of the Cape Cod Cranberry Growers Association. And we're interested in finding out from him his success in Montpensit. And apparently he had a failure and we want to learn about that before we go further. We're gathering information about what we need to know. Uh, we've we've uh, set forth our, our goal uh, and our mission statement. And uh, we're, we have a, 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 I'm going to be setting up, up a meeting with, with Brian Wick shortly so um is is the mission statement sound all right to you guys because this is the wa group uh not our group and uh the mission statement needs to be agreed on by by everyone um hampton and um melissa do you have anything to say before the group uh takes a vote on this uh, I mean, I think you you said it, Don. I, I know we've all been in on the conversation. I think you did fine presenting that. Yeah. Does it make sense to have them be under the auspices of WA? Yeah, I think it does. I, I'm thrilled to know that there's a group that's thinking about this. I mean, we have bogs as well in our watershed that some of which were already in conservation and need restoration effort. And um, some that are still active. And so, yeah, uh, I think we could use some more directed presentations around how to, how to contend with those types of activities. I, I would suggest given Heather's already involved in 
that in uh, her watershed that those lessons be transferred um, as you know as they unfold. Well, our our main uh, we I, I made a list of considerations for what we're what we need to do, and we got a very strong message from uh, from uh, Gloriana that you need to for form partnerships, you need to get grants. You need to get make, make peace involved because they're the, the most local presence for us at least. I thought it would be really good to find out about bioreactors because the bioreactors would enable some of the cranberry growers to recover some of the phosphorus potentially. We hear about bioreactors for nitrogen, but not so much for phosphorus. So I'm interested in finding out more about that. Heather, I'm gonna be giving you a call for sure. Um, about some of this. And uh, also we're, we're, we're interested in the environment, finding ways, not, not just re, redoing and re, remediating bogs, but also perhaps uh, uh, finding out more about using less water, using more efficient uh, berries, that kind of thing. So, but we, we tried to come up with a mission statement that encompassed uh, all of that without being too terribly specific because actually we don't know specifically where we're going to be headed. Can you read that mission statement one more time so we can... I, I, I certainly on could. It. Okay, the mission of the Watershed Action Alliance Cranberry Bog Coalition, and I, I, I apologize that the meeting we have, at the meeting we haven't got the name down. The mission of the Watershed Action Alliance Cranberry Bog Coalition is to cultivate long-term partnerships with growers and conservationists to explore and remediate a diverse uh, adverse effects of cranberry bog operations on the health of the ecosystem in southeastern Mass, and to honor the historic significance of the Wampanoag glands that sustain us. Um, so we'll vote on that. I, of course, will be abstaining, uh, but I did want to comment. I like how you use the term cultivate with the cranberry growers, very nice. Uh, so all in favor, please raise your hand. I can see you all. Uh, Melissa, do you want to vote? Okay, so that's unanimous. All those who are here, that's great. Um, I want to extend to the group uh, an offer of uh, posting stuff on the website. You can have your own page if you want on the WA website. Uh, let me know about that. Um, we can discuss what you can put on it.